Let's get it on. All right, y'all, it's about time to get down to the nitty gritty of this Ohio State Georgia game. You know, your boy been wanting to see this matchup for years, and it is finally here. I did not want to see this matchup at the expense of my Nittany Lions, though, right? I feel like Penn State should be in this game against Georgia. That is the matchup that I really wanted to see. But hey, Ohio State won it on the field. And you know why? It can probably be attributed to one person. The balance of power. My main man, Marvin Harrison Jr. should be a Penn State Nittany Lion. Had he stayed home here in Pennsylvania, that man would have been giving it to the Ohio State secondary. He may have swayed the entire game. One man can change something like that, especially if it's this man right here, Marvin Harrison Jr. Now listen, Ohio State's going to make you play football. Ryan Day is coming with NFL principles throughout a spread scheme that he morphs with a lot of pro style concepts as well. Now, Marvin Harrison here being flanked by Mecca Buka and a Julian Fleming, right? And a Cade Stover. These are NFL talents. And they don't just put Marvin Harrison on one side and tell him to go get it. They move him all around. They put him in the slot. They put him all out wide left, wide right, tight slot, whatever you can think of. He's going to make you play football. So if you see right here, Got Penn State, Ohio State right here. I want you to, to I want you to watch this right here. Yards after the catch. That's what they do. <laughs> They're gonna get you yards after the catch, and you're gonna be doing the damn thing right here. You can see this la layered concept going on right here, and you got Harrison right here in the slot. You see C.J. Stroud on the pull and Yaka, and look at that. That man start to pull away. There aren't too many cats I've seen like this dude, straight up. I've been following him since he was in high school, at his original high school, right? <laughs> that, man, that man is the truth. I was a huge fan of his father back at Syracuse because I was a huge Donovan McNabb fan. And uh, when I heard he had a kid, I'm like, oh, man, he plays football and a wide receiver. I just knew he was going to be the truth. And he may be the best wide receiving prospect, period, that I've seen, period. I think that highly of this guy. He has little man feet. He has a big man range. He can play with power. He can play with finesse. Anything you throw in his radius, he's going to get. He can make the splash play. He's fundamentally sound. There's nothing you can say about this man's game here. If you're playing in this off-man coverage, you see him coming, right? Pushing it vertical until it's not. Stick that foot in the ground. Look at that big man sticking his foot in the ground. Mecca Buka's not doing it. Julian Fleming over here. He's not necessarily doing it. You can see the change of direction skills right here because of the of the deployment. He's actually matched across Keaton Ellis right here to safety. So you can imagine this in that Georgia game, that being a Malachi Starks, that will be hard. But you see right here, natural hands catcher gets up to speed. His zero to 60 is nasty. I think he has good deep speed as well. He's just an all-around complete receiver, man. Big old kid like that, 6'4". <laughs> Come on, man. All right, y'all. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. If you want to go to some of your zone principles against Ohio State, they're probably going to eat that alive, straight up, right? You obviously have one of the best quarterbacks in all of football and C.J. Stroud here throwing to what could be considered the best uh, wide receiving core in all of football, uh, arguably, no doubt about that. So you see Notre Dame here going to its cover, too. You get that deep zone drop here by the linebacker, the inside linebacker, and of course you got your split safeties up top there. So what you get here from Emeka Buka, it looks like he was going to probably run some type of whip, right? Just pretty much saying if it was a hitch right here, then you get this out route right in the honey hole. So they're going to be able to do this. That's what I keep saying. They make you play football. I notice a lot of the Georgia fans come to the channel, and they're always talking about getting beat deep. As if that's the only thing in football. <laughs> shit is the goofiest shit I ever heard in my life, right? You can get your ass beat death by a thousand cuts as well. It's not just about explosive plays, nor nor is explosive plays only derived from going vertical down the field. You get what I'm saying, right? You can get explosive plays from a slant. You know what I'm saying? If you got the right personnel. But we see right here on the pool, he recognizes that bad boy and yak him. Too easy. Too easy for him right there, right? You get that honey hole, which is between that cornerback 
in that safety, in that cover two, you can see all the airspace and opportunity and where it will be. Ryan Day, which is going to be a dope-ass matchup. Ryan Day, Kevin Wilson versus Kirby Smart and Will Muschamp. That's hard. But right there, you can see they will exploit every single weakness that you have in your coverage by running NFL concepts. Now, if you talk about a team like a Tennessee, no, that's that high school type stuff, right? Where they do go vert a lot, but they pretty much run two or three different concepts. But they run them very fast and they run them very well with great personnel. So it's hard to combat that. Ohio State, a little bit different. They're going to run a variety of concepts and make you prove yourself all over that field, and they want to see if you can tackle. Just like Georgia. Georgia has very similar concepts to these guys as well, so you got to keep that in mind. All right, from this end zone angle, it's hard to see this route being run by Marvin Harrison all the way to the left right here, kind of ISO'd backside, but you can see him hit, come out of this curl there and C.J. Stroud, good enough to lead that man to the outside right here. Look at that. That's perfect. That's when you're fundamentally sound as a receiver to be able to show him the numbers, prepare and present yourself, and then you have a damn quarterback that's a damn animal who's able to be like, all right, if I throw this curl route, maybe the guy can get to it, but if I throw it to the outside and lead him away, right, lead him away from danger, is probably unlikely he will be able to cont contest this, and that's exactly what happened there. They're playing football out there, man. All right, so you know the Georgia folks watching this are like, my Aunt Cletus, will he stop showing all that other stuff and just show the deep ball? Well, here you go, Cletus. We got here on the pool right there. Oh, look at that, and look at this. Uh, let's get it, man. I'm telling you, he can do it all. He can absolutely do it all, so... That man who I can't say his name because all his fans jump on me when I'm just covering the sport here. Uh, just imagine this right here. This will be a, a good test, right? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't give a damn about just deep balls. That's not me, fam. <laughs> right? I play this sport. There's more to the game than deep balls. I know you guys like this. It's like the home run and the, and the, what, the, power, the power play and all that. But look at this man get off right here. Let's see what he's working with. Pause going against my man Kalen King here. We're going to ball out next year. But we see, oh man, King tries to get hand on man, but you're not going to get hands on man on this dude, man. He's too big, too strong. He doesn't look that physical, but he is that physical. You know who he reminds me of? Former Georgia wide receiver A.J. Green, just like that dude. Big man with little feet there. But we can see here he gets that late separation, right? Gets a little bit of a pandemic separation, right? That's that late pandemic separation, though, right? We weren't as scared. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like the early pandemic when it was like nine feet. This was about three, four feet or something like that. But right here, let's check this out right here. The ham chicken fighting stage right there. He's able to combat that, and the guy can just flat out run, just like an A.J. Green. Right? It looks like A.J. Green out there in a the uniform and everything like that. So I'm talking about... AJ Green prior to his injury. A lot of people probably only know him after being injured. To look at that man in the NFL before that. But check this out. Oh, he can turn. That wasn't even that good of a pass, but he can turn and, and contort his body. Uh, he's got great dexterity as well. He's just an all-around freak. Now look at this. They have great synergy. If you want to play the hands-on man game like Kalen King right here, and he gets on top of you, they'll also go to that back shoulder fade. Look at that. You see him here aligned in a tight slot, right? If you have to go to some of your fabricated pressure schemes, you may get Harrison isolated on a linebacker just like this. Check this out. Oh, uh, back shoulder fade. What I tell you right there, if it's even like that and he can see a safety approaching, Stroud has the ability to adjust to a back favor, a back shoulder fade just to ensure that man has the opportunity to both protect himself and to complete the catch. All right, remember, I'm just showing you and prepping you stuff for Marvin Harris. I wanted to do something on this guy for a long time, right? I just wish it was him in a Penn State uniform, but I digress there. You see him running this post route right here. You can see how he gets the cornerback spun like a dreidel. That mama jama is nasty with his route running at six foot four, and he can do his thing. Now, people are thinking this probably won't, I don't know. You just never know how things happen, but this probably won't be a much of a problem for someone like Georgia because they don't have to commit extra bodies in the run game. It looks like 
Indiana here was definitely afraid of the run. You can see everyone shoot up. You got the safeties. We got him, coach. We got him, coach. So this left this man isolated one-on-one -on -one with the dude who has outside leverage. And watch him bang it to the outside like it could be an outbreaking route and then cook it to the inside. Oh, right there, he was done. Absolutely done right there. That as actually early pandemic separation, right? That's day one pandemic separation when they told us it was a thing and he gone right there. Jakob, the rest was academic. You know, I can't show this shit all the way through bitch ass digital exo sports or exo digital sports or whatever like that out here making a spot hot with these fraudulent ass content ID claims. Come on, man. This part of his game also reminds me of AJ Green. Look at him get up for the downstroke. Oh my God, look at how high he is. How high? Like red and meth. Look at that and look at this. The man has that Gumby leg. Who would have think to keep their left foot in the air and come down on their right foot? Tell me if you've seen some shit like that before. That's crazy. I'm surprised he didn't mess up all kinds of knee ligaments and everything. But clearly that man has a future in exotic dancing, being able to do some shit like this. <laughs> Look at this, man. I ain't never Bro, that's Magic City's finest right there. <laughs> what? Come on, man. That's like Onyx. Club Onyx. Check it out from this direction right here. Oh, my God. All kinds of weird shit going on about this one right here. We don't want to talk about all this and that and this and this. Come on, man. What? Actually, let's look at the full version of it. You'll see them here, right, with that Cobra Blitz. And Stroud does a good job of replacing. Look at that. Oh, look at him. Stick that foot in the ground. Not trying to round that route off. Covering the Seattle Seahawks, they have DK Metcalf, who's a freak of nature right there. He has trouble getting out of his brakes. Him and Harrison are the same height, but look at him break it down. Oh, my goodness. Hit the tight right on him and get it flat down the line of scrimmage to where that man can put that shit out there right on the line. And look at that. And look at him go up and get it. And you know the rest. Oh. Club Onyx out there in Baltimore. All right, this is how you know you truly don't want to get beat deep. You'll put your corner in freaking vertical bell with a ton of cushion. You see that man in vertical bell right here. But this is what they do. They'll convert on this, right? It was like, oh, you want to bell out like that, right? We'll go to some of these stop routes or now routes right here, right? Just get a quick curl going on right there and let a guy like this run after the catch. So I don't want to hear no bullshit. You see that? That man don't want to get beat deep. <laughs> right he's actually running to the end zone to this day right you see right there he's not trying to get beat deep and then they'll just hitch that out right there let harrison get it and then let him convert like that like i said just making you play a complete game of football with your pass defense all right last one right here real men watch to the end and then comment going against my man dj turner shout out to dj turner and his pops Enjoy that man's pops on the recruiting trail. Uh, that man's pops is cool as hell. But check this out right here. DJ Turner is actually in very good position. DJ Turner didn't get hands on man, though. You don't get hands on man on a big freak like this. Uh, you can see what's going on right there. DJ does decrease the space. However, this just the dexterity. Look at both of these guys joking each other's up by their shirt lapels. Right? You got two dudes joking each other up. But look what happens as they split screen this right here. The back shoulder fade in vogue. Look at the body control. Able to still convert that with DJ Turner in great position. Marvin Harrison is that dude. And you got Marvin Harrison being thrown to by CJ Stroud, being flanked by Mecca Buka and Julian Fleming and others and having a decent run game. What may do them in, I believe, is the loss of Travion Henderson, who I believe could be the best back in the country, at least top five, no doubt about that. Uh, that kid is unreal. But we shall see, man. There's a lot of different aspects to really go over in this game. I'm going to try to hit on a few of them. Uh, the offensive line of Ohio State versus Georgia's defensive front. Ohio State's offensive line. It's got some good names on it. No doubt about that, man. But sometimes it can leave a lot to be desired. Also, Ohio State's inability to tackle in the open field. That alone right there I think does them in. <laughs> I think Georgia, if you can't tackle, you can't mess with Georgia. Because Georgia can tackle. That's the one thing about Georgia. If they can't do anything else, or if it can't do anything else, it can definitely tackle. 
and is a roughneck group. However, the lack of pass rush and the inability to get an organic pass rush going against Ohio State who can convert these quick hitters and has the ability to uh, work with some of these replace hots and all that, uh, that's something to look into as well. So a lot of shit going on, man. Should be a very good game, man. But as always, thank you for watching your boy, the Underground King, Mid-Atlantic Murph. Strike the band. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.